Assalamualaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna That Me. Back with another video where we will be discussing the ospi of the ear, the external, middle, and internal ear. So continue watching and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Here you can see the external ear. There are two parts of the external ear. The first part that you can see is known as the auricle. Let's talk about the auricle first. This part of the auricle is known as the helix. This is the anti-helix. And the part that opens up into the external auditory meatus, this part right here, this is known as the concha. The part where the helix becomes a C, this is the crust of the helix. And the part that is closing your concha or closing your external auditory meatus, right here, it's not shown here, it's known as the tragus. And this is the anti-tragus. Where the helix end and a fibro fatty tissue begins, this area is known as the lobule of the ear. Now let's talk about the second part of the external ear, the external auditory meatus. So it isn't as simple as it seems. It's not just a hole rather, it's a whole canal. So this canal you can see is the external auditory meatus. The external auditory meatus is about 24 millimeter in length. There is an outer cartilaginous part where the cartilages are found and an inner bony part. The inner bony part is larger, it is about 16 millimeter, whereas outer is the eight mill outer is eight millimeter in size. So you can see it's bony because it is lying within the tympanic plate of the tempora bone. Right, so there's this area in within the bony part or inner part of the uh, external acoustic meatus that is narrowest. This is located five centimeter lateral to the tympanic membrane, which will be lying over here. Let me show it to you. Here's the tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane just five millimeter this area is known as the isthmus narrowest part of the bony part of the um, external acoustic meatus now you can see uh, most of the ceruminous wax glands will be found in the outer cartilaginous part of the meatus let's talk about the tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane is kept at an angle with the floor of the meatus floor of the meatus this is the floor of the meatus it is kept at 55 degree angle so with that let's talk about the tympanic membrane a little bit so the tympanic membrane you can see has an outer surface and an inner surface the tympanic membrane overall is divided into two parts. You can see the tympanic membrane being attached all around to the tympanic sulcus of the temporal bone. The only part of the sulcus where it, the sulcus is deficient is this upper part. So here it forms the tympanic notch. From the tympanic notch anteriorly comes your anterior malleolar fold and a posteriorly comes the posterior malleolar fold. So these two folds will extend to the malleus bone that is lying behind the tympanic membrane. You can see. This is the inner surface of the tympanic membrane. Here is the handle of the malleus folds basically extend from that area or anterior part and, and extend to the lateral process of the handle of the malleus and this way tympanic membrane is divided into lower part upper part lower part is known as the pars tensa upper part is pars placida behind the pars placida lies your quarter temporary nerve so do not damage this now with that with the tympanic membrane we've crossed the boundary line between the external ear and the middle ear and now we're going to enter your middle ear major contact of the middle ear you can see are the ossicles so you can see here the lateral wall of the middle ear cavity is the tympanic membrane itself because this is lateral side. Alright, so tympanic membrane and a part of the squamous temporal bone are going to be the lateral bound. So you can see that this right here is the anterior wall because this is going to be our face in the front. So it's coming anteriorly. So therefore this is the anterior wall. The anterior wall of the uh, middle ear cavity is you can see is for, formed by the canal for the tensor tympani muscle and this auditory tube. Apart from that, there is a thin bone separating it from the internal carotid artery. The next part of the middle ear cavity boundary you can see here is the posterior wall. This posterior wall is seen like this. You can see this is the aditus where you can enter your mastoid antrum. So this is basically the mastoid and antrum full of air cells. And if you want to enter the mastoid antrum via your middle ear cavity, you use the aditus area, all right? Next you can see here is the, if we talk about the floor. Floor is formed by a bone that separates the middle ear cavity from the internal jugular vein, which is right here, superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. And another part that you can see on this model is the tympanic canaliculus will also be present on the floor. Uh, let's talk about the medial wall. Medial wall has uh, quite a lot of uh, structures including the, the fenestra vestibuli leading to the vestibule of the middle ear, then a promontory, a projection that is going to be formed because of the first turn of the cochlea and then there will be a round window. Apart from that you can even see a prominence of the facial canal around here and the uh, prominence of the lateral semicircular canal. For this concept you should watch my video of the middle ear cavity because over here you cannot visualize these parts well. Uh, therefore, I won't be uh, pointing out exactly what is which part is what. So the lateral wall, lateral wall we all know is formed by this uh, tympanic membrane. It is formed by tympanic membrane. It has also an opening called the anterior canal for the corda tympani nerve, whereas the posterior canal is located in the posterior wall. Inner ear, you can visualize the cochlea. 
you can visualize the canals. These are the semicircular canals. This canal right here is posterior, this is anterior, and this is the lateral semicircular canal. And finally, this nerve you can see here is a vestibular cochlear nerve, which is going to be taking all those sound signals to the brain. So overall, sound travels from the external ear, goes to the tympanic membrane, vibrates the tympanic membrane, and the tympanic membrane makes the ossicles vibrate. And when the ossicles vibrate, the footplate of the stapes, which is linked to the vestibule of the inner ear, uh, transmits those vibrations inside within the inner ear and inside the uh, various receptors, hearing receptors. These are sensed by the vestibular cochlear nerve taking it to the brain. So overall, that was a basic understanding of the OSPI of the model of the ear. Thank you so much for watching.